Hi, I'm Dr. Jean Hernandez, president of Edmonds Community College, and I'd like to welcome you to our winter quarter Edmonds Community College highlights. Before I start and talk about our activities for winter quarter, I'd like to sort of recap some of our highlights from the month of December. I'm really proud and excited to tell you that Linda Kappas, one of our music faculty, was selected to sing with a choral group at Carnegie Hall on December 11th. We're so very proud of Linda and know that this must be a professional highlight for her. We also had our faculty working last year in creating a faculty senate, and our faculty senate actually convened for the first time at Edmonds Community College this fall. Uh, it is a well-represented group of faculty uh, with members from all the different divisions, and their hope and focus is to work in curricular as well as governance type items and issues for the college to help us have a stronger communication process where faculty can be involved in discussions, uh, to be able to also be actively involved in the selection of faculty representation for different college committees and events. Uh, I'm really proud of our faculty for being innovative and thoughtful in this process and I know that it will be a great addition to our campus. Now to talk a little bit about what's happening for winter quarter. Uh, as a community college that's comprehensive with transfer programs, workforce programs, uh, classes for our students who need uh, adult basic education or high school completion diplomas, as well as continuing education, we are a, an organization that is governed by a six-member board of trustees. And we are really glad to announce that Governor Inslee appointed two new trustees for the college. Dr. Tia benson Toll, who is going to be joining us uh, this January as a new trustee. She will be filling a five-year term. And also uh, our student trustee, Omar Abdullah, who will be serving a one-year term. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Tia benson Toll. We're really proud of the fact that she is an individual who has her PhD in material sciences and has worked uh, heavily in the field of composites and is uh, a nationally recognized leader in composites and material science. For example, she started um, and joined the Flight Dynamics Laboratory, uh, Wright Laboratory as a composite structures program manager in their Advanced Composites Advanced Development Program Office. Uh, and she also worked at NASA's uh, Johnson Space Center as part of the flight crew instructor in the Space Shuttle uh, Flight Training Division. Very prestigious um, position for her to hold. Uh, and then she also joined the Materials and Manufacturing Directorate of the Air Force Research Laboratory in 1992. Uh, she's held positions including Chief of the Structural Materials Branch and Lead of the Composites Core Technology. Um, we also are excited that she is currently the Director of Advanced Materials at Boeing and has just an extensive history of working with aerospace um, materials and engineering. We are so proud of her joining us. We feel that with our uh, very strong partnership with the Boeing Company and other aerospace industries in our, in our neighborhood, that she will just help to strengthen um, our visibility as well as uh, support us in new and innovative curricula. And then a little bit about Omar Abdullah. He is the third student trustee that we have had at the college, and we are one of two colleges in our 34 community technical college system to have student trustees, and we're very proud of that fact. Uh, Omar has been very active in student government and has also been a spe specifically involved with the Brown Bag series uh, in helping to coordinate those. And he currently is also working um, at uh, the, YM, the Dale Turner YMCA, where he is a part-time sports instructor. He's a very busy person, and somehow he's managed to find time to be our student trustee, and we just think he's going to do a wonderful job for us. Edmonds Community College takes great pride in being innovative and forward-thinking, and one of the things that we're doing right now is creating what we're calling the facility, a maker space. This will be a, a location uh, in Monroe Hall where we are going to be offering individuals that are innovative, uh, artistic, or enjoy working with their hands, but want to have an opportunity to work with different types of technology. It'll actually allow individuals to come and rent space at the college. This will be an opportunity to access laser cutters, 
3D printers, 3D scanners, as well as CNC routers. So if you've been thinking that you've been wanting to create this very unique design for yourself, or maybe you've been wanting to make a bobblehead of yourself, here's an opportunity for you to come to the facility and be able to uh, experiment with different uh, equipment and have somebody there to help you learn how to use these different tools and be able to come home with a product. Um, we will provide you on the screen with information of who to contact for more information, but we really believe that this will give you an opportunity to maybe try out some new skills for yourself or maybe to advance uh, the types of products that you offer through your current company. We are very proud of a recent uh, grant that we received that's called iCatch. This is a $15 million grant and it's going to continue work we've done the last five years through what we called CATCH grant. And CATCH stands for Creating Access in Careers in Healthcare. And the iCatch is basically an extension of that with a much more expanded uh, curriculum. iCatch is serving individuals who are in low poverty or have been on temporary assistance for needy families. The goal is to help individuals that have lived in poverty to be able to have a really uh, great opportunity and a career path that will give them a living wage and will also provide them uh, a pathway that can lead to further education. This iCatch grant is a partnership with uh, Everett Community College and Skagit Valley College. And we are the principal school and are the fiscal agent for this grant. This grant will uh, serve 250 individuals over a five-year period and Edmonds Community College will be serving 120 of those 250 students. My experience with the CATCH grant that we had for the previous five years has been that we always exceed the number of students we serve, and I have no doubt that we will do that once again. And in a way, this is sort of a two-prong approach. Not only are we trying to help individuals get into better paying jobs, but also we're trying to help our industry partners in our own you know, backyard to be able to find skilled workers to meet those uh, high wage demand jobs that are so difficult to find because of the skills gap. So I feel that this is one way that we can continue to, to see that the word community is our middle name and we're trying to meet the needs of what our industry partners need. Some of the training from iCatch that will also be included will be nursing assistant, patient care technician, EKG technician, practical licensed nurse, registered nurse, pharmacy technician, phlebotomy technician, and medical billing specialist in medical office. Now these are all different titles that will be shared by the different colleges. For example, Edmonds Community College, we have uh, both the nursing assistant and the licensed practical nurse on our campus but it would be Everett or Skagit that would offer the registered nurse program. But again, this will be a way to get our students started at whatever level that they're ready for and then grow from there. We also are very excited that with iCatch, one of the unique parts of this program and why it was so successful in the past is it has what we call wraparound case management. Individuals who have had a lot of challenges in their life are not always prepared for the challenges of college. And so by having wraparound services, if uh, one of our students is dealing with childcare issues or maybe they're, they're feeling like they're not getting uh, enough you know, resources such as food or housing, then these navigators will work with them directly with community resources and help them to be able to get whatever they need. And this partnership with iCatch, I should also mention, is not just to help industry, but also many of our non-government organizations in our community are working with us. Uh, so we're really proud of the fact that we have strong partnerships with uh, Workforce Nahomish, as well as DSHS and other organizations like that in our community. We have a number of upcoming events that I'd like to also tell you about and would like to encourage you to try to attend some of those events. Uh, they're all open to the public. Uh, and first, I'm going to talk about a few events that we have that will be held in our Black Box Theater. First of all, the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Celebration, which will be held on January the 14th, will have two presentations. One will be at 1230 um, early afternoon, and the other will be at 7 p.m. 
Our keynote speaker will be Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, who will share an inspirational message. Dr. Dyson is an American Book Awards recipient and two-time NAACP Image Award winner, and he's actually one of the nation's most influential and renowned public intellectuals. Not only has he taught at some of the nation's most prestigious universities, uh, including Brown, Columbia, and the University of Pennsylvania, but his influence has carried into prisons, bookstores, political conventions, union halls, and church sanctuaries, and lecture stages across the world. Both the afternoon and evening events, again, are free and open to the public, and we hope that you will join us for that. In addition, we also have our epilogue art exhibit, which will be held in our, our gallery, which is located in Linwood Hall in our library. This event will take place from January 4th through March 14th. I really would like to invite you to stroll through the gallery and experience a really unique media. This is epilogue art is something that's a new collaboration among Min Carico, one of our visual arts communications instructors, and Sunjin Kshon, and Karina A. Del Rosario. Their first venture was with the founding and managing of Idea Odyssey, a collective art gallery dedicated to artists of color in the Seattle's International District. Epilogue, the uh, exhibit that will be on our campus, is a celebration of the physical gallery's closure and an exploration as a trio embarks on their first artistic collaboration. They engage in conversations about identity, growth, and discovery in a visual construct, interpreting and rendering each other's visual works, writings, and artifacts in previously unexplored media. Also, we will have a reception to honor these artists, uh, which will be held on January the 15th from 3 to 6 p.m. in the College Art Gallery. I have no doubt that this will be a wonderful experience and hope you can join us for that. As part of the college's commitment to arts, culture, and civic engagement, we are partnering with the Snow Isles Libraries and Humanities Washington to offer some wonderful events on our own campus. We're calling it Conversations in the Humanities, and it will be a thought-provoking lecture series on the campus that will go throughout our winter quarter. I would again invite you to be part of that and be able to you know, come to campus and attend some of these events. We're going to be featuring Sam Louie on January 20th at 7 p.m., a psychologist and Emmy Award winning broadcast journalist who uses spoken word poetry to help audiences better understand the depth of cultural issues that confront Asian Americans. On February 24th at 7 p.m., we will have Professor Mike Van Quickenborn, who will speak and share his unique talk on philosophy, film, and comedy by sharing brief clips from Being John Malkovic, I Heart Huckabees, Intolerable Cruelty, and Adaptation to start a conversation about philosophy and explore issues raised by each of these films. And then on March 9th at 7 p.m., we will have Jennifer Stuller, who will speak and explore how geektivism, geek girls, and game makers are creating and fostering more inclusive communities through their commitment to social justice and using their, quote, superpowers, unquote, to challenge the social norms. So you can see that there will be some wonderful lectures uh, in, this pro in these programs for you to enjoy, and I hope you'll join us for those. And then I'd like to share with you that it's time again for our internship and career fair. This is an event that we hold uh, in our Woodway Hall, room 202, and is open to the public. If you're job searching, whether it's for permanent positions or you have somebody you know or yourself that needs an internship, this is a great time to come on campus and talk directly with industry partners. Uh, this event will be held on February the 3rd from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'm sure we'll also have employer panels talking about the things that they're looking for in successful candidates. We'll have such companies as Bonneville, Seattle, Snohomish County Legal Services, Travel for Real, and Pacific Science Center, to name a few. Again, these will be jobs that will help support students while they're in school or help lead to permanent employment for students that are getting ready to graduate. There will also be diverse companies seeking internships in the areas of 
accounting, graphic design, horticulture, hospitality and tourism, IT, marketing, paralegal, and much, much more. And remember that internships are always a great way for a student to start their career. Gives them really hands-on experience. So I hope that I will see many of you at some of these events. And uh, to see the full list on campus, if you look at our screen, you'll see that we have listed for you uh, the website where you can log on and see the different calendar events happening on our campus. So as I close, just again want to remind you that if you or somebody you know is interested in completing or starting college, we would certainly be excited to have them come and join Edmonds Community College. We just have a huge array of certificates and two-year degrees that someone can complete and be able to get started on a very successful career path. Thank you.